we actually had a cooling. <laughs> we had a cooling. How many remember about the, the cooling and all the books that came out and articles saying the Ice Age is coming? <laughs> yeah. And then since about 1975, things have been going up. Here's the sunspot cycle length right in here. It matches the increase from 1910 to 1940, and it matches the drop from 1945 to in the 1970s, opposite the increase in carbon dioxide, which goes the other way. And now they're both in sync. So I would say that when you look at this, this graph, uh, the sunspot cycle is more correlated with the temperatures that have gone on in the, since 1880. Uh, so I'd say there's at least a natural component from the sunspot uh, cycle. The question is, how much? And I'm going to talk a little more about that. From looking at this, I would say it's probably at least 50%. That's being very conservative. Anyway, here's some of those books on the New Ice Age coming, published in 1976. Has the next Ice Age already begun? Can we survive it? The Weather Conspiracy, the coming of the New Ice Age. I have actually a third one in my uh, books at home. Just published uh, not too long ago in Geophysical Research Letters by Sc uh, Nicola Scafetta and Brian West, they did an analysis of, the correlation, of these correlations, and this is their conclusion back in 2006. We estimate that the sun contributed as much as 45 to 50% of the 1900 to 2000 global warming. In other words, they believe about half the global warming is caused by the effects of the sun. 25 to 35% from 1980 to 2000 is, uh, of the global warming is from the sun. In fact, they think that man is mostly responsible for the global warming as of late, is what they're saying. But before uh, uh, 1945, or, or in the period 1900 to 1950, they believe that global warming was, was caused by the sun 76%. So on the average, you get about 50%. This is published in the standard... Scientific literature. In fact, there's a lot in there that you can go read yourself. And even Al Gore can read it if he would take the time. <laughs> Here is the global average temperature since about 1988. This year was a, was a strong El Nino year, so it's an anomaly. So you can almost erase that. That was due, El Nino causes a global warming. But if you... If you kind of draw a smooth curve in here like this, it almost looks like global warming has peaked by 2002. And a number of scientists have pointed this out. And it appears that it might be going down. In fact, last winter was quite cool all over the globe. And that cooling has continued into the spring and summer. And so it appears that we have global cooling starting. <laughs> no. And you know something? This matches what's going on in the sun because we're in a sunspot minimum right now. Uh, uh, not only an 11-year min, but a, a 100-year Gleisberg cycle min. In fact, I'm told that we should have sunspots showing up in the sun now, but we're not getting any. So period, it's appearing like maybe we're going into another Maunder minimum where we had 70 years where they hardly saw any uh, sunspots and it was quite cool. So it appears like we're going into global cooling and it's matching what's going on in the sun while CO2 continues to increase. But I must have a, a caveat on this. It's a little too soon to tell. We've only had about one year of cooling. It's a little too soon to tell. There might be natural effects from the oceans, which some people think could, have, could be causing this. But time will tell. But regardless, it appears that we're, we've been cooling over at least the last year, and some think since about 2002. And uh, the, last, no, the previous winter, uh, to kind of go along with this cooling, the amount of sea ice around Antarctica set an all-time record. That's sea ice, not the, uh, the ice that comes off Antarctica. It's the sea ice that forms every year. I must add, though, that uh, in Ar Ar the Arctic Ocean, we've had a record low amount of ice last year in 2007. This year, we've had a 9% increase in ice. 
So we're starting to go back the other way. Even though they say the volume of ice might have decreased, but I don't know if that's a fudge uh, or, or what, but at least there's the, the, they can tell you from satellites that we've increased ice 9% from the previous year, which was a record low. And there were some reasons for that record low. The, the, the wind pattern was very conducive to push the ice out uh, through what's called the Fram Strait. So we had a very uh, uh, weather pattern that wanted to remove the ice or, uh, out of the, uh, the Arctic Ocean. So it was an anomalous year anyway. But time will tell on this too. So number five, the UN and the media, <laughs> this shouldn't surprise you, is the bias is horrendous. And it's, I, but I don't think it's the worst bias they have. It's second only to the bias against creation and the flood. In fact, if you want to read a, a, a book, a recent book, about the, the strong bias against creationists, uh, Jerry Bergman just published a book called uh, um, The Slaughter of the, <laughs> of the Dissidents or something to that effect. I just read it this, this last week. Uh, goes through all the people who've lost their jobs in the college and, and the students who couldn't get their graduate degrees because they, they voiced uh, disagreement with Darwinism. Sometimes it's not even, they don't even do much and they, and, and they get canned. It's, it's really a, 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 a it's, it's, it's ridiculous discrimination is what it is. Anyway, here's the sort of things that uh, they rationalize. This was uh, in Discover magazine. Steven Schneider is an atmospheric scientist who actually wrote a book about the Ice Age coming in the 1970s and giving us a drought scare. In 1989, he, he had an article published in Scientific American say, oh, it's global warming and it's going to cause drought.